Okay, this is an Amazon Fire tablet, uh, seven inch from 2019. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to hold down the power button and click restart. And once it starts, I'm restarts, I'm gonna hold down the volume down button until I get a recovery menu. And at least till the Amazon screen comes up. Give it a second here. And here we go, we're in recovery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to the second option here using the volume keys. I'm gonna go down, or the third option, wipe data, factory reset. I'm gonna hit the power button, then I'm gonna use the volume keys to go to yes, power button, and it shouldn't take very long to do. Okay, now I am going to hit the power button to boot system now and we should have a fresh clean system. Now, if you go to gitlab.com forward slash melex1000, I have a project there called Amazon Fire 7 2019 Notes and, fi and Files. It's a very long name. There should be a link in the description of this video. If you have trouble finding it, just go again to gitlab.com forward slash melex1000 is my name, and you should be able to search through my projects there, and I don't have a whole lot that have the word Amazon in them. Uh, so right here, I'm gonna click English, I'm also gonna show you that you don't need an Amazon account to activate this tablet. Let me real quick here connect to my Wi-Fi. It says I'm connected. There we go, just a second. So when you start this up, it's gonna look for an update here. Here we go. So it's wanting me to log into an Amazon account. It says if you're new to Amazon, you can click here. So I'll click start. And it's going to load up this orange screen, wanting me to put in my country and region. And what I'm just going to do is I'm going to hit uh, cancel. And I think if I click that again and go cancel, let me do it one more time and cancel. And then now, uh, not, not now button. I'm pretty sure that wasn't there before. Uh, let's see, right there. It says not now. And then we'll skip registration. And now the tablet's ready to go, but again, it's got all this Amazon junk on here. <clears throat> and we're gonna clear out pretty much all that, even some of the, the calendars and stuff like that and replace them with other APKs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into settings here. And if I remember correctly, again, this is the same on pretty much every Android device. Uh, we're gonna go down to device options. And we're gonna go down to about. Fire tablet, and here we're gonna click the serial on. number. Click on that seven times. And now you have developer options, and we're going to turn on developer options, okay. And then we're going to make sure that we have USB debugging on, okay. Now, everything else is done from our desktop. I'm going to, I already have it connected to my desktop, so it's already seeing that device. I'm gonna say always allow this desktop, okay. And now, on my desktop, I'm, I've already cloned that project from GitLab, and what I'm gonna do now is, real quick, uh, I have some notes in here. So if we list out our files, you can see that we have a file called cleanup, which we can cat out, which is what we're gonna use next to disable the packages. So these are all packages I found that you do not need uh, for this to run properly. Now, if I cat out notes, there's lots of notes I have on this device, but really we only care about the top part of it. So I'm gonna just head out that file. So at the top, you can see here that right now, if I run this command, I can ADB, I can push this file to this directory. And this is a temp directory. They call it a temp directory, but it never actually gets wiped out on an Android device. But I'm gonna push this executable file to the device. And then I'm gonna ADB shell to get a shell there. And I'm just gonna copy this command to get to that directory. And once we're there, we can list out these files. You can see here's the mtk-su file that we just copied. Again, this is in the project that you download from GitLab. And we're gonna make it executable with change mod 755 and the name of that file. And now, if you run that, you should get a root shell. And I say should, sometimes it does not work. It did work that time. If it didn't work, just do it again. I've only had it once or twice where it didn't work. Uh, but now that file's on there. Anytime you want root, you just have to go there and run that file. Uh, and if you don't want root on the device anymore, you just remove that file. You want it again, you copy it over. Now that we have that file, I'm gonna split my screen here. So the top half up here, this is the tablet. The bottom half down here is my desktop computer, again, with the files we have in here. I'm gonna cut out uh, cleanup. And actually, let me just go ahead and head 
clean up and start off with that. So real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to list out how many packages I have. So or, or list all the packages. So those are all the packages we have. And if we pipe that into WC space dash L, it will give us a count. So right now there's 186 packages installed on this device that it came with, okay? And what we're going to do, if we list, if we do the same command with dash D, it will list all disabled, which we haven't disabled any yet, but we're gonna disable a bunch. And you'll see how much Amazon stuff on there you don't need that we're going to remove. So real quick, here is the command again, PM list packages. So PM is your package manager for Android and that's on all Android devices. We're gonna list all our packages. Then we're gonna grep for every single one that has the word Amazon in it, except for uh, ones that say Fire OS, Amazon Fire OS. Cause if you remove that, the tablet won't boot all the way. So we're going to do that. Then we're going to cut and just get the name of the packages. And then one by one, we're going to disable those packages. So there's a lot of them. And if I just take that command, copy and paste it in here and hit enter, it should start going. And one by one, it's gonna disable. It's disabling. There we go, that one's done. Now, if we run, again, we go back up here and we say this uh, PM list packages dash D will list all disabled packages. So I will go ahead and do that. And as you can see, there's a list of them now. And if we pipe that into WC-L, we just disabled 122 packages that we don't need, okay? But we're not done yet. Let's go ahead and disable, that was good, the longest one. We're gonna disable all the Kindle packages now that some might've been disabled because they had the Amazon name in there, but not all of them did. So here we go. And again, we can actually uninstall these, but there were a few that reappeared after I disabled them. Now, if we disabled all the Amazon packages, uh, if we removed all of them, maybe that would prevent them from coming back. But so they're taking up a little bit of storage, but they're not running, which is what's important. So we removed 122 before. Now, how many have we disabled? Two more. So there were, there were two more in there that didn't have the Amazon name in them. Uh, again, I'm going to disable a few others here. And so these, again, are inside the text file called cleanup.txt, and you can choose which of these you want to disable and not disable. That's why I didn't put it as a script that you run. Um, so let's go ahead and down here say less uh, cleanup. So we can go through here, and I can just copy the ones I want to disable, and I can copy a bunch of them. So we just did the calendar one. It doesn't hurt if we uh, do a few. So I'm just going to grab a few of these and then up here. So again, the top is the tablet. The bottom down here is my desktop where I'm reading uh, the files from my package that I download, my project. And then these last two here are um, language packages for the keyboard. I had an issue where I didn't disable this, and even though I installed another keyboard, it kept on defaulting back to a Japanese and Chinese keyboard, um, and these are Japanese packages, so I disabled that. Now, let me go ahead and turn this camera back on, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the tablet on, and I swipe up here. If I go home, there's nothing here. I can't do anything. It's trying to start. Fire is starting, but nothing ever happens because we disabled the launcher. We also disabled our keyboard. So even if I come up here and go search, I, no keyboard's gonna come up. So you can't really do anything with the tablet now. So that's why you gotta make sure that you have a launcher and a keyboard if you disable them ready to go. So what I'm going to do now is back on my desktop here, I have a folder called APKs, which again, oops, CD APKs. And here are a number of APKs uh, Android packages that I like to use. F-Droid, that'd be the first one you want to install. I like uh, Lawn Chair is the name of the um, launcher that I like. And uh, then AnySoft is the keyboard that I'm installing for my son. That's in here somewhere too. Um, but what I'm going to do is you can install these one by one. But if we cat out, we can cat out install APKs. You can see that basically you can say a ADB install and the name of this APK file to install it. This is just going to run through a loop and install all of these ones because these are the ones that I want installed. You don't have to install all of them, but I'll go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and check this. They're still installing, but if I turn the screen back on now, 
and unlock this and hit home. There we go. So now I have the lawn chair launcher, which one of the things I like about the lawn chair launcher is uh, I can, if I wanted to, I could hold down on one of these and say edit. And if we focus in on that, you can actually make some of the applications invisible. So stuff that runs in the background, stuff that you don't want, or if I want something on there, but I just don't want it showing up unless there, I can hide those, which is nice. So anyway, uh, all those packages installed. Uh, it looks like one failed. Oh, VLC failed. Anyway, I can always go now into F-Droid and install that. Uh, but that is the process that I go through and the notes where you can get them all. So again, I removed all the default calendars and stuff like that. I replaced most of them with, I like the project called Simple. Uh, they make a bunch of Android applications, Simple Calculator, Simple Camera, Simple Clock. The only thing I don't like about it is their default icons are these ugly orange colors, but uh, most of them you can change that. If you go into the clock, which has an ugly orange theme, you can actually change the theme and I believe it changes the color of the icon too. Um, but that's it. It runs, it doesn't have any of that Amazon. There's still only one Amazon package on there, which is like the Amazon Fire OS. And again, if you remove that, the tablet never completely boots and you're unable to actually even ADB and install stuff. So you don't want to, uh, accidentally remove that, but look at the, the files again on, uh, gitlab.com for slash melix 1000, my Amazon project. There should be a link in the description of this video and that's it. Uh, and also I'll show you the keyboard, any soft keyboard. And you can pick, there's lots of open source keyboards. I can go in here and I just have to enable it. But you can see there's other keyboards I've uh, disabled. Uh, those last two packages we removed were saying uh, they were language package is and on my daughter's, I did this to my daughter's tablet as well. And even though I enabled the AnySoft keyboard, it kept defaulting back to that, but in the Chinese. So her keyboard was always Chinese and every time she restarted her, her uh, tablet. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And uh, again, check out the links in the description of the video to the project where I have all these notes and the files to root it and stuff. And I hope that you have a great day.